Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And I'm Shira. And today we're doing another Play This Not That of Winter Kingdom versus... Kingdom Builder. Kingdom Builder. Both designed by Donald... I can never get this name right. By Donald X. Vaccarino? Vassarino? I'm not entirely sure. But the guy who did Dominion and Winter Kingdom and Kingdom Dominion, Builder. Dominion. That you Dominion. just got away. Dominion? No, no, that's Domain. Domain. That's Domain, Never yes. Mind. Domain is going to be Klaus Tober, who did Settlers of Catan. But, Ooh. yes, and, and, and Dominion is a game that you've played a long time ago, but I think you only played it once. Okay. That's neither here nor there, because we're not comparing Dominion. Nope. Today we're comparing these two games. Now, sure, do you want to tell us why these games are comparable? Um, I think they might have a similar title. They have the, a similar the, title. The Kingdom War is in both of them. The Kingdom War. Um, designed by the same people. Designed by the same people. Uh, produced by same the same publisher, publisher. Queen publisher. Games, yep. One is just a better version than the other. Ooh, which one? Wait, 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 no, wait, wait. I'm not hold saying hold which up, one. Up. I just said one was better than one the other. Was, I, I wanted to know your opinion. Either way. So Play This Not That, for those who don't know, is going to be a series where we compare two games. Now, more often than not, they are not exactly the same game, but rather they have genera general overlap similarities. Our Zombicide was pretty much the same well, game. Well, Zombicide would be one of those exceptions. Zombicide would be one of those times where they're literally which, one, which version of this yep. game is better. And in this case, it's going to similarly be that... Again, Winter Kingdom is the newer version of Kingdom Builder. New is relative. This is roughly a year old, something, somewhere in that range. And Kingdom Builder has been around since 2012, maybe. Maybe later. I don't know exactly when, but it's been around for a while. It says it was established in 1989. Mm, that's going to be the company, not this game. It, it says it in the side. That's going to be the company. Okay. Not this game. Fine. Winter Kingdom has not been around since 1989. <laughs> but that said, in Play This Not That, we compare the games, we talk about the differences, the pros, cons, why they're worth comparing, different aspects, we'll go through a checklist one at a time, and then we tell you which one we prefer and why. Sometimes it's going to be a firm conclusion, sometimes it's going to be this one for that, this one for that, sometimes we like both of them, sometimes we're getting rid of one, all those things. Ultimately, it's, it's a comparison with an undetermined conclusion, at least as of now. So... That's it. Let's cover the general gameplay overview of the games, and then the differences, and we'll go into all those aspects. So, general gameplay overview in, in these games, in both the games, we'll talk about the similarities first, because the similarities are very much going to be, well, there's more that keeps the games together than has them separate. General gameplay overview is you're going to have all your huts. You're going to have a whole bunch of terrain tiles that will be combined in different ways. In, in Kingdom Builder, you're going to have four terrain tiles on the board, and you can see it up in shape. And in Winter Kingdom, you're going to make a literal grid of these, a center board, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way around this board. So you're going to have those over there. From there, you're going to, on your turn, draw a terrain card that matches one of the terrains, in this case, Snow, which is in Winter Kingdom, but not in Kingdom Builder. And then you're going to put a bunch of your huts onto the terrain tiles to basically try to score various goals in the game. Now, the trick in these games, the thing that simultaneously frustrates people mm -hmm. and intrigues people, is the fact that you can only ever place huts adjacent to huts you already have on the board if you are able to do so. If you're not able to do so, you suddenly have a lot more freedom. So the more you place things down the board, the more you actually constrict yourself in these games, and the more you get locked into certain patterns, which means you need to place your stuff very precisely, and then more importantly, earn abilities in both these games that will allow you to break those rules, abilities that will let you move your settlements around the board, to, to place on other areas, to do different things that will give you that freedom that you crave to actually get what you want. Because what you're trying to do in these games is you're trying to fulfill different scoring objectives, which will vary every single game. So you're going to draw a bunch of cards, and again, it's going to vary based on what expansions you're playing with, what content you're playing with. But the general idea is you're going to have three different cards that will define your scoring objectives for this game. So for example, let's say if we have these three over here, we're going to have scouts, uh, scouts, climbers, and nature lovers. So for instance, climbers are going to be what cards. Was the exact three. They were right at the top of the board. <laughs> so climbers, for example, is going to give you two victory points for each, uh, for each one of the settlements that are linked to to uh, mountains, but directly through a chain of your settlements. Uh, nature lovers are going to give you points for being next to mountains and ice, and then we're going to have scouts, which are going to give you points for connecting citadels to their edge of their boards. So you can see how every single card in these games, and again, that's going to be true for both these systems, every card is going to give you unique scoring mechanics that will kind of set up a puzzle for you that you have to try to solve. You're like, okay, well, if I put a hut here, a settlement here, I'm scoring for two objectives. But it also, if I enclose the Citadel, I'm going to be getting points for that as well. There's a whole bunch of things you're trying to kind of manage as you go through the game. That's going to be the high-level similarities. Any, any core concepts I'm missing here? Um, The twist? Well, that's going to be like, differences. Oh. Differences. We, yeah, we didn't get the differences part. Anything, anything in terms of similarities that are similar? That are similar, I guess. No, I think you've covered it. Cool. So you're going to do that. You're going to go through the game, score at the end, you and again... Money. 
you need well so money's gonna be one of the differences in the game really so differences in the game are going to be as follows in kingdom builder the way you earn abilities is on these boards what you're going to have is you're going to have right. different segments over there you like i did that yeah um you'll have no these... i'm remembering now oh. that like you have to surround this and like Correct. touch one touch one and each one corresponds to a different ability yeah. that you can then get the tile so every single one of these boards and you're only seeing a small subset here i have a lot more in there because i have like every single expansion that's been made for kingdom builder every single board is going to have that good it was that good. I really liked Kingdom Builder. Uh, like and liked Kingdom Builder. We'll get to all that stuff. But uh, we're going to go... So every one of these things that you circle on the board is going to uh, give you uh, one of the abilities you're going to use to kind of break those rules. So you're placing your things not just for scoring, but also to earn abilities and trying to manipulate that to get the rules. In Winter Kingdom, on the other hand, you're going to be doing that by the use of cards. You're going to be given five cards at the start of the game that you'll have to then earn money to play those cards, which brings us to the second difference, which is money. You're going to have money in Winter, in Winter Kingdom because you're going to need that to play your cards, and there's going to be different ways you earn money. No different than the way you have different cards for scoring. Every game is going to give you one card, the mo money card, that determines how you earn money in that game. Maybe you earn money by placing around towns. Maybe placing around the edge of the board. Different I think aspects. we had one that you had to place in a straight line. Yes, there was. That was really annoying because yeah. it didn't work with some of the goals of that game. They just give you different things you can do. It mixes uh, up the puzzle and creates extreme variability. Yeah. And speaking of making up a puzzle, the next thing, as you mentioned this already, is going to be the twists. The yes. twists, which totally changed up the game. We just played with the wolves. The wolves is when you play four or more settlements in a turn, you remove one of them from the game because the wolves are attacking you. Yeah. You have the archip ar archipelago, which is going to basically split your whole island into two separate islands not connected at all. Sounds really cool. They're just different aspects that, again, mix up the gameplay. So similar to the way Kingdom Builder and Winter Kingdom are already providing you a puzzle that changes every single game you play, the twists add another element to the board. Uh, past that, there's going to be the general shape and structure of the board. Mm -hmm. uh, Winter Kingdom, because of the fact, well, first of all, in terms of the general shape of the tiles, is going to be different, and therefore the board structure. But additionally, because these are going to be printed, the abilities on the board, in Kingdom Builder, your abilities are tied to the boards that come out. In Winter Kingdom, not so much. Uh, there's going to be some other things, but I think tunnels. one of those... Tunnels. Tunnels is going to be... I was just going to mention that. You want to explain tunnels? Tunnels. Um, on each board, there is exactly one tunnel. It's almost like a portal that if you have one of your huts next to it, then you can use that ability to then go to any other board and land next to the tunnel. The other tunnel on that board. Um, but it has to be a legal spot to land on. Yep. You can't land on a mountain just yep. because... Here, tunneling there. Yeah. Um, so the mountains tunnels, are hard to tunnel through. Mountains in both games are impossible to go on unless you have an ability that breaks special, that, special which ability. is a general concept of the game. Yeah. I think those are going to cover the main gameplay, the main differences. And I think at that point, I'm realizing sometimes I think we do mechanics doing the mechanics section. We do the mechanics now, but we'll talk about the mechanics doing the mechanics section. So why are these games worth comparing? Because they are basically... The, the same, same game. game. <laughs> yeah, okay, that. Price. Price, price is going to be the first one. So, price-wise, you don't generally know these things, no. but if you have to guess which one's more expensive, which one is it? Um, I think this one has more expansions right now. It does. So that is going to be the nuance. This is um, going to be more expensive with all its expansions, which yes. you have. So Yeah, so Kingdom Builder, with all expansions, is going to be more expensive. Winter Kingdom base game versus Kingdom Builder base game are going to be roughly comparable, but Kingdom Builder with expansions will obviously be a different picture. Now, the reason that's relevant here is I think, and I, 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 no, I wouldn't say I think, I would say I am certain that I think Winter Kingdom base game gives you more playability than Kingdom Builder base game. Does King it come with all these cards? It does. Yes. So yeah, I now, think it does. Kingdom Builder comes with a bunch of stuff, but the, because of the way they have the cards in here, mixing up the abilities, like base game Kingdom Builder gives you a handful of abilities because the abilities are locked to the specific tiles. That's going to be one of the expansion stuff. Oh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of expansion stuff in the game. Much of them. Yeah, there's a lot of expansion in Kingdom Builder. We have a lot of content. Now, Kingdom Builder has a lot more content now, but again, base game to base game, Winter Kingdom, I think, gives you more variety in the experience. Yeah. So in terms of the price point, take that into account as you go through it. But price otherwise is similar, and we'll, we'll see whether there are expansions for Winter Kingdoms as time goes on. Next up is going to be, we have Ease of Learning and Teach. So... Well, we taught it to a new player today. Two yes. new players, actually. Yes. Um, we played one today. And it I think was... both of them have played Kingdom Builder before. Yeah, I think they both have. Okay. I know one for sure did. I think they both have. But, but neither played Winter Kingdom. No. Um, yeah. Which we played today. And I think it was relatively easy. It taught within like 15, 20 minutes. Like yeah. maybe even less. Both of um, them. Go ahead. Both of them got it. Uh, they both are not new to games, which yeah. helps. Um, it's medium weight, I would say. Um, yeah. 
So yeah. in terms of the, the ease of learning to teach, both of them are going to fall into, I would say the learning of the games are going to be very similar. Uh, the actual teach and getting into the first game, I think I actually think Winter Kingdom is a bit harder. Uh, primarily because of the fact... The cards. The cards. And the instruction book have no method of organization. Well, they do, but it's a backwards method of organization. Yes, they it's organize bad. It's straight it, up bad. They organize it by the skill on the card, not by the card. It's so impossible to find. You have to find the for. top part of the card and the bottom part of the card, and they could be in two completely different sections, and you have to go by the name of the card. It's yeah. really, it's really in, awful. In Kingdom Builder, you're often going to have, and, and this might change as you cover expansion content, but let's say base game, you're going to have four abilities that you have to teach people. Four. That's it. You, once you cover the basic game, there's here are these four abilities, and then you're done. In Winter Kingdom, you're going to have to teach them. Well, I mean, if you're playing a four-player game, you have to teach them twenty different abilities because every player gets five cards. Every card is completely unique. It's kind of taking a lot of the content from all the world of Kingdom Builder and splitting up into their own individual cards in different ways so it gives you a lot more things you have to teach people and they either have to look at the rule book themselves or be comfortable with you knowing what your cards are which is not a big deal i think they should right. be comfortable with it but it, they might not be and then you're going through the rule book the rule book is an absolute mess not in terms <laughs> the general rule book very easy it's like three pages very yeah. easy to learn very easy to teach but the actual cards it's, it's horrific it's straight up horrific uh queen games you should be ashamed of yourself for the way you structure your abilities in the rule book uh, but that's going to be the, the ease of learning teach aspect. And then also, like, the twist, the mon money. The, the variability, like, yeah. the different scoring objectives can also throw people for a loop. Like, yeah. if they played, if you play games really close together, then you could be like, oh, we were going for that, and then we have oh. to totally switch it up. It messes Because we played you. two games in yeah. a row, I think, one day, and we were like, oh, you have to go in a straight line. And we're like, no, you don't have to go in a straight line yeah. anymore. So it really messes with you if you play the goals It completely messes you up. They, the, the way these games are structured is that they're giving you more of a, of a, of a structure, of a system, and then you're given the actual well, okay, now what are you trying to do as you play? So it does completely mess with your brain because what you're trying to do one game completes, completely messes with you the second one. That's going to be true for Scoring both Scoring is also different. I don't know if that comes up at what point. But Scoring like, in what sense? The games differ in the scores that you'll achieve. Like what, Some games oh, are higher oh, yes. scoring, some games are lower scoring. Like within the, la the game we played today, we all ranged between like 20 to 40. Yeah. Um, whereas... The game we played a few months ago, we ranged between like 80 to 100. Yeah, it can vary drastically, um, for sure. Or it was actually, I think someone had 30. It was like 30 yeah. to 100. It was a wide range. Well, before we go there, so this is more mechanics, but we're drifting away from that. So we did, we covered price, we covered easy learning teach. Let's go through the, uh, the, art, the art and components, and apparently theme. We bundled them together with you. So, let's start with theme. What do you think? Um, I actually can't tell the difference between the themes. Yeah, seems reasonable. <laughs> seems reasonable. They're, they're the same Despite theme. Despite the fact that that was named winter. This is winter. Um, I don't see much... Yes, there's snow and ice on that board, but mm. that's really the main difference, um, I think, and it's just a variable terrain type. So, ironic, because the game we're playing today, someone said he thought we were playing Frozen today, we we're playing Spirit Island, but this, this would be more Frozen. Yes, especially that picture on the front cover. Mm, it's but, like, the desert, the flowers, the forest, the grass, none of those look very wintry, honestly. Yeah, I mean... Um, the little towns do. I would have to say the towns look different. Um, aren't That's a good point, though. That's a good point. I mean, not that you can see that this well, but apparently the towns still have snow on the rooftops, but the snow didn't stick on the trees. That is wildly inconsistent. <laughs> so um, I was actually thinking about it as we started the video. I was like, which artwork do I like better? Because I know it comes up. Mm -hmm. And I think the artwork is clearer on this one. To tell the difference between the terrain types, that one, I always get confused between the mountains and then... The caverns, kind of. Uh, the valleys. Yeah. I don't know what they're called. Yeah. But they're two purpley things, and I always think I'm going on one, and then I have to go yes. on the other. Those two are so similar on that terrain that it confuses me. And then the portals, also. Like, the portals are also similar to the mountains that you can't go on, um, which threw me for a loop. Yeah. These terrain types are just a lot more... A lot clearer. Um, the water is very clear, the sand is very clear, the grass, the forest, the flowers, and the mountains. Um, and then I don't know what these are. These are the valleys? Those are the valleys in that one. And this much, is so much clearer. It yes. actually looks like a valley. So, so. I completely agree with you on this. Uh, I, I Not only is there are there clarity issues, but I prefer the general feeling here. I don't mind winter as a theme, but it kind of feels like half done in here. There's half winter and half the I like the colors the on this one better. Mm. The colors are more vibrant. They are a bit more vibrant. And it pulls me in the vibrancy of it, but yes. Yeah, no, if I had to choose, if I was going by by design alone, again, theme, similar, yeah. uh, but the I prefer this. And then components, I think, are going to be more similar. So components-wise, I don't know if it matters that much. I will say, I believe the huts in Winter Kingdom are going to be unique to the player. So that's going to be different, meaning your huts, your settlements in Kingdom Builder are going to be exactly the same. In Winter Kingdom, each player has different huts. No, they're all the same. No, that well, we're going to sit there and open this box, apparently. <laughs> they are all the same. We're going to see all have... open this box. Prove me wrong. Yeah, I'm going to. Here we go. 
Here we go. And here we go. Well, I didn't play with any of these colors. And here we go. Just bear with us a second. This is a this is a learning moment. Here we go. How is this one different? Oh. Oh, interesting. Should I keep oh, pulling up? Yes. Okay, we got blue the green now. Okay, and then one more. And here we go. That one's actually a broken one, but we'll give you this one. Okay. And is that it's different? Fascinating. They're all slightly different. Very, it's very minute. It gives it such a personality. Yes. I like it. <laughs> So components apparently in Winter Kingdom. I apparently didn't notice. She likes it, but uh, yeah. So so Winter Kingdom is going to be slightly, slightly better in terms of the components, just in that sense alone. Just having different uh, huts for each player, different settlements. But past that, the components are going to be very, very similar game to game. Card quality, coins are in this game, not in the very other. Very similar in size yeah. too. Yeah. So overall, components I think are uh, similar in that sense. Which brings us to from there, we go to the mechanics. This is going to be the big one. Mechanics is going to be ultimately what do we prefer mechanically about these two games and why? Want to start? No, you can no. start this one. Okay, I'll start. So, to begin with... Whew, lots to cover here. So, to begin with, there's going to be tunnels. I very much appreciate the tunnels in Winter Kingdom as opposed to the lack of tunnels in yeah. Kingdom Builder. The reason for that is one of the big complaints Kingdom Builder has, like I said already, I touched upon this. While I like the puzzle and the restriction it is giving you, a lot of people do find themselves frustrated with... I can't move. Unless I get the good tiles, unless I get some abilities to let me move, I'm so locked in and restricted mm -hmm. to the terrain I'm on. I can't get around the board. I can't fill my first scoring objectives. It feels like you're constricted rather than you're being a, given a game. Again, I don't necessarily feel that way. But whatever degree some people do feel that way, I do feel that way a drop. And I will say the tunnels completely break that. The tunnels give you a constant option to jump from board to board. If you don't set yourself up to be next to a tunnel, that's on you. You have to teach people the importance of it yeah. and the relevance of it when they first start the game. But then once they are, you're in the game and you can go from board to board. Any one of these boards, you have a clear, easy jumping access point to hop to any other board in the game. So that little bit of restriction you might have where I didn't get good abilities that meshed well, that did this. Winter Kingdom jumps you off the gate by taking that away from you completely. So that's going to be the first win for me in Winter Kingdom. Okay. Want to go next or should I go continue on? Um, I mean, that was basically what I was about to say on the tunnels. Cool. Mechanic wise, I'll go with twists. I yes, love the twists. The twists are really good. I was actually thinking about this. Um, Archipelago? Archipelago? Archipelago. Archipelago, I believe it's called. Archipelago. That the trainborns are not connected. You couldn't play this without the tunnels in this game because you the trainborns literally yep. separate it. Um, I like the twists. I like. Just, I feel like this one has different, more scoring objectives. So they both have three scoring objectives, but this is going to give you no, more, more variety. variety. Like, yes. The, it changes. Like, I don't think I've had any of the same scoring objectives in any of the games I've played, which just makes it more interesting. In addition, does this one have, um, does Kingdom Builder have where you surround the castle? It does. It does have that. I think it's a little different. If I recall correctly, it's just touching it. I don't think it's area control. I think it's just if you're touching a citadel, like if you're touching it, but I could be wrong. But that's going to be, so you have these citadels in here and the citadels Can in here. Can you fight over them? Like in I the don't same way? I don't think it's fighting over them. Because yeah. that also adds a interesting mechanic. Um, one yeah. of the players today complained about not feeling like he was playing with other players. He was yes. kind of doing his own game. But when I cheated him out of a castle, I felt very, very happy. Yeah. Um, Multiple and times. To be fair, it's a reasonable complaint. These games are going to be much more multiplayer solitaire, but on the same board with some co contesting each other. You're kind of doing your own thing, and then players will get in your way. They do matter, but it's with the scoring like, objectives. It kind of sets up optimal places for you yeah. to start out with, and then you're like, "Oh wait, you took that one. I was planning on going there next because you can only go." Yes. And you have to have the right terrain, so it is a little luck based based on the terrain you get. But yeah. there's pretty good places in every single terrain. No, but I agree with you. I, I prefer the general variability here. The, you have the scoring objectives. You're going to have the different ways you earn income, the that different twists. Cool They're all going to give you some other additional aspects. So I think the general feeling of variety is going to be slightly higher in Winter Kingdom. I think where Kingdom Builder will feel slightly more variable is going to be the boards. Because you have a ton of different boards, you're going to never, you're never really going to see the same boards and twice. This double sided. They are double sided. So you do have that. And then the, co when you combine the double sided and the different ways you can set them up, the different ways you can maybe turn, yeah. It's still going to be very different, but it's going to you're pl you're still playing with the same boards every single time, at least until they introduce expansion content for this game. And I will say that I don't think they necessarily need more boards. I I want them because I I want something else or interesting. But because of the way that the abilities are not tied to the board in Winter Kingdom, I think it's less important to have more boards. But there still is going to be more variety of like, oh look, we're playing with this particular map and this particular river flow and all that. A little bit more of the variety in the board state in Kingdom Builder, but the rest of the variety, I think Winter Kingdom gets a win there. Speaking of um, powers and abilities, yes. um, I it's a debate. I think like, each one has its merit. The yes. fact that like 
everyone has access to the same four abilities versus yeah. every player has their own individual set. You can kind of feel like, oh, well, I didn't get a good set of cards and therefore I don't have a great way to play the game. Yeah. Like if you get all putting out um, hut cards and not any moving cards, you then it's restricted. really, you can be very restricted. Or if the opposite happens and you get only moving cards, but you still are stuck with your primary place out three, then you're yep. going to fall behind in the production process. So I like the equity yeah. Um, with this one that every single, that the four boards you choose, those are the four abilities for every player and first come first serve a little bit. But this one, I also like having like my own secret. Um, now it's worth noting if we process. care enough about that, and I don't even know, it's possible they mentioned this as a variant. I don't remember seeing it, but if you care enough about that, worst comes to worst, you can always draft those starting cards. If Interesting. Really matters. Yeah. Or you could also put the starting cards above yeah. and have everyone There's ways play. around it, but I agree with you. I agree with the starting cards. There's going to be, both of them are pro and cons. So I think drafting would actually make it better. It could be intriguing. It could, especially because of the scoring objective. I think if they matter enough, it could matter. But uh, yeah, the, the I think it's a, both of them get a kind of a draw for me in the way the abilities are handled. I like different aspects of them. In Winter Kingdom, I like the fact that you have the abilities not tied to the boards. So it's like, I always have these abilities in play and I like having the variety of the abilities and feeling like there's a lot more going on. In Kingdom Builder... I, I like the fact that there's fewer abilities to a degree, which makes the teaching easier and the jumping in point. It also means that every game is more likely to feel different because you're playing with different abilities every game, as opposed to in, in Winter Kingdom, while you're not going to see all the cards every game. I have the same card see, both games. You're going to see a greater overlap. Yeah. You're not going to see everything. It's going to take time to see everything, but it's much, definitely a larger degree of overlap as opposed to I could play Kingdom Builder a ton of times before seeing the same ability, at least with all the expansion content. So a little bit of a mix. I think I slightly prefer Winter Kingdom on that, but there are aspects of the ability handling in uh, Kingdom Builder that I do prefer. I think if we tried the drafting, I'd actually probably like Winter Kingdom better on that Even aspect more, yeah. because that way you feel like you have some choice in getting a good yeah. um good combo set past that anything else you particularly prefer but one or the other uh we talked about the art um which yeah. one preference um mechanic wise i like the fact that you have to earn money to then unlock those cards versus this one if you don't get the terrain type that's near um where the houses are yes. located you can kind of feel like well i'm never going to get there yeah. Um, and then once you place your first placement, you have to place adjacent to it if you can. So then you're even further, like, restricted. So yeah, for me, there's a bunch of small sub things. I think for me, the main things are going to be the twist, the income, and then the tunnels are such a big one. The way the boards are set up, the, the board shape, I think, is as well as a factor. Because the board shape in here with the four boards, the way they, they join together in Kingdom Builder, while it does work and it works decently, especially with the lack of tunnels, with the lack of jumping off, you tend to have people end up being a lot more clustered in the game. You'll jump around a little bit, but it's going to be a lot more clustered in the way the game plays out. The tunnels make this whole entire board, even though it's larger, much more accessible. When you combine that with the abilities in your hand, and one of the things I, again, like, even though I like the fact that there's fewer abilities at times and the mm -hmm. fact you won't necessarily see everything, in, in Winter Kingdom, like, in, sorry, in Kingdom Builder, because, like, of the way that the abilities are locked to a quadrant of the board, it means that I, I feel like getting all the abilities can be so challenging because you have to jump around the board. You have to get those abilities that right. let you move because, well, there's one ability here, one ability here, one ability here, one ability here. They're all, they're, they're completely separate quadrants. It doesn't make the game feel as a, like a cohesive universe mm -hmm. as much because of that versus winter kingdom because of the the way it's set up and the abilities are completely disconnected from the actual board state it makes it feel like more of an interconnected system it makes the abilities feel more cohesive in the way it joins up in the actual game honestly kingdom builder would benefit from having the tunnels to be able to Very jump so. from board to board and be able to get those abilities so then you can actually start getting an engine going i think it would benefit yeah. from it and then lastly, the one thing I would touch upon in terms of pre preference, and this is a little bit unfair to Winter Kingdom, is I do like that in Kingdom Builder, there's a lot more expansion content. <laughs> this one's it, new! It's, it, I said it's not fair. It doesn't I said have, it's not fair. It hasn't had a chance. I said it's not fair. I'm completely fine with that. At the end of the day, I think Winter Kingdom, I think Kingdom Builder gives you more variety in the amount of stuff you can actually do in the game. While I like Winter Kingdom a lot, and while a lot of things I think are solid improvements over the system, I think that it needs those expansions right now because right now the amount of stuff I can do with this system versus the amount of stuff I can do over here, this one currently wins in that category. Again, unfair. But in terms of I'm the bomb weighing like up, where they can even place in good expansions. Oh, so so variety of things. I mean, just I mean, to begin with, more cards is always fun. More twists. But like, more this, the boards change. Like they the can change. add more boards. So you can you can mix things up. So more cards to begin with, more scoring goals, more twists, more economy, all of and that. You could create another subset of people and stuff. You can have different subsets Does of this people. Does this have the double one? 
double one what? You know, there's a hut that's twice the it size. It does not have that. Um, yeah. I don't think we mentioned that. Yeah, we that. didn't touch upon that. There's, in, in Winter Kingdom, you're going to be given four huts that are basically towers. These towers are, are count as two settlements for the purposes of scoring, for the purposes of area control, for the purposes of a bunch of things, but they can't be moved. So you can choose when to place them, pro and con in that. But I think there are definitely things you can do. You can definitely, terrain types, I mean, terrain types would be potentially, potentially a little harder, although you could throw in extra cards. I know Kingdom Builder over time threw in more and more terrain types. You have to get types. both, both boards and yep. cards for it. Yeah, but I, I think there are definitely things you could do, uh, ways to be innovative. You could even just come up with a center tile that goes in the middle that has different mechanics attached to it that yeah. force people towards more of a conflict aspect in that center. There's Sounds like Hunger Games. Any... <laughs> There's, there's, there's things you can for sure do uh, to make the world different, to add more tiles, to give you more content. I don't know exactly what they are. And like you said, because of the differences in the way the games are handled, it could potentially be a bit different in that sense. But that is basically that, which brings us to the final part, the play this, not that. What's your preference? Uh, play this, not that. I think my preference is actually Winter Kingdom. Winter Kingdom. Um, the combination of all the variability and the tunnels and the vibrant colors... Even the complaints with the rule books, I still think I'm going with Winter Kingdom, and the fact that I'm anticipating expansions coming out, so... Oh, I hope so, because I'm right there with you. For me, Kingdom Builder, to, for context here, Kingdom Builder was at one point, it, and it settled over the years, but at one point, Kingdom Builder was in my top 10 games. It was a game that I loved the variability. I loved the challenge of trying to figure out what you need to do in the puzzle. I loved every aspect of what the game was doing, and over time, it did go down a bit. It was a little harder to teach with all the way the boards played out with tons of different content, I'm just getting text messages. Sure is getting pings on her phone. I'm getting pings on my phone. Completely throwing off our flow here. <laughs> Neither of us but, turned off our phones. But I am going to go ahead and mute this because that's a thing. At apparently. least you have yours next to you. Yes. Mine is across the room. But that is neither here nor there. Point is. Kingdom Builder is a game that settled for me over time, that I, I continuously played it, I loved it a lot, I've gotten tons and tons of plays with it, I've gotten every single expansion for it, and and that's why, by the way, the box is not the base game <laughs> box, because I just have all the expansion box, I think I eventually got rid of the base game. Either way, neither here nor there. Point is, that Winter Kingdom, for me, I played it, and I am getting rid of Kingdom Builder. The games are too similar to own both, at least in my opinion, yeah. and I think Winter Kingdom does enough things better that even though there are some rough edges around it, like you said, the cards, like they, 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 they're a better system, but they can be a bit overwhelming for new players, but I think Winter Kingdom is a much better system, one that I overall prefer, one that I'm looking forward to the expansion content, and, and one that I want to play with more twists and more income and more yeah. more goals and the more different... Twists are really awesome. Yeah, even just the twists. You can just mess with It'd things. It'd be nice and... if you can implement... We can implement two twists. Ooh. You, depending on depending on the twist, you probably could actually. Some might conflict with one another, but, but that would be really cool. Yeah, Two we twists. have wolves and archipelagos. We got a <laughs> fun little island of our own. That's just gift. That's going to be our. Oh, wait, wait, do you want ratings? We have to do reviews of these two. So, what would you rate these two? Uh, what rating system are we using? Because uh, I've we're, seen no, we're multiple using... complaints about our rating okay, system. Yeah, that. I apologize for the rating system in the past. Uh, I will attempt to gain more control over the channel. It's hard because I have people on the loose. But that said... So you dictate the rating system and I will follow with. Five, the the five-point rating system. Five-point rating system? Are we doing the over-under? or um, The over-under is tricky because this game's been so... We played it already. No, so... not because of that. But because I've had Kingdom Builder in my collection for like okay. t t nearly 10 years. Someone that range. I don't know exactly. But yeah, so, so just go with plain out of five. Out of five, I think Kingdom Builder is a four and Winter Kingdom's a five. You guys is a five. I really like Whoa. it. I enjoy it every single time. There's like a little vindictive side of me that like is oh. like, oh, I cheat you out of this. I cheat you out of that. I like these games. They're not, they're not, again, Kingdom Builder at one point was a five for me. I will say both of them are a four to five for me. Uh, I, but to be clear, this is the better four to five. There's but, a limit. So that was where I ran into the problem. I'd be like, they can't both be the same number they, because I do prefer one over the other. So like, That's okay. Oh, you can have points of... 4.25, 4.75. So when you I'm round, cool they go to 4 and 5, but... No, I agree. I, I mean, Kingdom Builder to me is... A, I like both the systems. The, this is going to be a bunch of minor improvements over a game that I already like. Uh, they're both 4 to 5 to me, but this is the better 4 to 5. So so what she said about those, those points <laughs> that I don't use in my rating system. So that is basically it. That's been another Play This Not That video. Make sure to check out the others on the channel if you're interested, like our Zombicide 2nd Edition versus Zombicide Black Plague. Apparently it's got a lot of views. Yeah, that's the thing. So, until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe. And I'm Shira. And have a good one.